This week on Crunch Week, Apple drops the beat on music, Uber picks up a bunch of Microsoft engineers, and Ship makes its couriers full-time employees. Hi, welcome to Crunch Week, and joining us is... I'm uh, Matthew Lindley. And I'm Alex. And this week we had Apple Music finally launch. Yeah, what the hell is Apple Music? I, I feel like it's a Spotify thing, but with a different logo on it and different <laughs> music. You know, it's not really that surprising to me that Apple finally got into this, but uh, I, I haven't actually used it yet, so I've been okay, let's actually, it? Let's talk so about we'll that. Slow, slow down for a second. Is it a streaming service like Pandora, or is it like Spotify where you're searching for both. tracks? It's both. It's both. Okay. Well, there's the radio, right? They have a radio, worldwide okay. radio okay. channel. And then... Sorry, I've just, like, I've never used this before. Yeah, so, so it's actually... Oh, let's actually talk about that. I had okay. a hard time finding it. Why, and why is that? Because, well, I went through the whole software update, and you have to go through, get the 8.4 version on your phone, and it came up again. And according to everything I read, there's supposed to be, like, a little white music icon on your home screen. I searched through my whole phone. There was no and So icon. Apple just totally shaded you and said absolutely Completely, not. Completely, yes. Why do you think they made it so you had to upgrade your phone to a new version to get the actual software? I think that limits the initial audience for Apple like Music. Like it's not in the App Store, you mean? Is right, it, why not yeah. just make an app that I can download and get it right away? Or do they want everyone to have it when they upgrade their phones? I'm not technologically savvy enough to know why that might be. There might be some reason that that might be that the engineers can answer. But also, you've tried it before, right? A little bit, but, okay. but, but, but more importantly, I feel like it's, it's been a steady drumbeat of, of press and media attention that has really, I think, raised the profile of Apple Music from this theoretical product to an actually market moving force. When Tidal announced, it had a good media cycle, but then not enough to kind of back it up and it fell off immediately. No, it was dumb. Right, I agree. That was dumb. But this part that was like, hey, we're Spotify too, but with a lot of stars that really like want to spite everybody. Right, but this Nobody is cares. I feel like it's, it's, a, it's a material competitor to Spotify because it's had such a, a, a long and, and steady drumbeat of attention paid to it by the public and also us in the media. Right. So I wonder if it can actually slow down Spotify's growth and therefore harm that company's valuation. What do you think? So it's curated, right? The radio station is. Okay. So, 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 the, yeah. so the radio Beats station's one. curated. So, so, you're, so it's something between a cross between like Sirius and Spotify and, and Pandora, Pandora and all of these things Yeah, put it's together. like everything together well, for nine ninety nine. Well, it's Or fourteen ninety nine. the family plan. The thing is, that sounds awesome, except Apple's never been very good at software, right? Or they've, they've, or they've, maybe they've gotten a little bit better, but you know, you can look at things like, like Ping, iTunes Smash probably isn't very used that often. Um, you know, other parts of its software, Apple Maps was a total disaster when it first launched. Right? iCloud. iCloud. No. Or, uh, oh, yeah, Mobile iCloud, Me, Mobile yeah. Me, way back in the day. Oh right? man, and now Connect <laughs> is the latest iteration of failures. Um, but I mean, they have this massive scale. I mean, the iOS install base is so large. If everyone who updates to iOS uh, 8.4 over time, which everyone well, will. If only, if only, if only 10% of the 800 million iTunes users upgraded to the subscription model, they they've already, Spotify. It's yeah, they've already Spotify, blown the way. Because Spotify's yeah. currently 20 million subscribers, and if they had 80 yeah. million using your math, that's 4x. But I don't think that'll happen overnight, let's, let's be clear. But certainly I think they've, they've broken streaming out to a larger... To be fair, they have iOS 9 coming up. pretty... They have iOS 9 coming up anyway, Absolutely. so everyone's going to download that. I, Apple's, yeah. Apple's very good at getting people into the newest... And I think 10% new... is... Pretty conservative. I think well, that could happen pretty fast. I do love though that people bemoan Microsoft in the '90s for using their platform to push new products and take on competitors like Netscape, and now mm -hmm. Apple's like, that works. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Plus, obviously, Apple is willing to work with artists, whereas Spotify. No, is I don't. Not. Think that's true. I don't think that's true. I think Apple just has the clout, reach, and money to push them mm -hmm. around. I think Spotify is constantly buffeted. Like Pandora, yeah. it's the same thing. Well, I they mean, with the Beatles, really right? Better I mean, the Beatles. They have. If anyone Taylor can Swift, do it, if have... anyone can do it, Apple can do it. Absolutely. Yeah, you're going to get all so. the music you want. Apple, there. Apple, like I'm sure, if they decided to be the ones that are going to make this like streaming only, like they would be the ones that could pull that off. Right? There's so. one irony though. I, I loved watching the the, the tech media lose their mind about. Radio. They're like, oh my god, there's a new radio station. It's gonna be great. It's curated. I'm like, I don't want that. The whole point of Spotify also, is that I'm Also, have in we never heard of a radio station? Before. I haven't. What is this FM you speak of? <laughs> exactly. Um, by the way, you got a pretty. You had a really interesting story about Uber picking up a bunch of Microsoft employees. What was that about? Well, Microsoft excised about a hundred engineers from the uh, the Bing Maps. Uh, image team. So the guys that get 3D information, they get the aerial photos and so forth. So the people that really get the, 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 the raw footage into Bing, they're now uh, Uber employees. And that was a surprising move. I mean, because Microsoft has been very adamant about not uh, losing Bing, period. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, Uber has a lot of money and has a huge appetite to improve its product. I mean, 
when you use Uber and Lyft, you just have a map, right? Mm -hmm. And then cars move around on it. It's relatively commensurate. But if they can take this new engineering talent, but 100 engineers is a lot of engineers. That's a lot of engineers. If they can take that to improve their core product, they can have an advantage over Lyft other than just pricing and so forth. But what does that mean for Microsoft? I mean, why? Are, it's a bit of a nuanced point, but I mean, yeah. so Microsoft, so Bing uh -huh. is not just a search engine. It's search tech that they deploy across, you know, Cortana, Windows 10, and so forth. So yeah. the actual search layer they've built will persist, but they're just getting out of this one part of the business. But how is Microsoft okay? I mean, with losing that many engineers, that I mean, Microsoft's a pretty big seems... company. They got 100,000 employees, but I mean, these people were probably the core of the imaging team on the Bing Maps group, and so it's it, it, it's really a, a, a extinguishing of that part of their work. But I mean, also this week they gave up the ad business and they're shipping 1,200 employees to AOL. Horizon, and so I really feel like this is part of a larger slimming process across the company to mm -hmm. focus more on things. But again, if you're a platform company, can you really afford to not do everything? Well, and, and right now, I'm not sure you can. Uber's also hiring like crazy. Yes. I mean, it's it's growing by leaps and bounds. I think almost to the point where, I mean, I meet or hear of or see so many new Uber employees on a weekly basis. I just met with the PR team, and I think maybe. 50% of them are new within the last month. Well, I'll just say Uber PR is the new Apple PR. And I mean that as meanly as possible. Yeah, that's <laughs> I'm, what I'm, I'm trying to be unkind. Uh, uh, but wait, it's so small, it's a, does this mean they're going to be fixing their navigation? Because I know they have their own like proprietary navigation, or maybe it's some like offshoot of like an older Google Maps SDK or something like that when, well, you're, were, when you're navigating within the Uber app, right? The, the big thing was they were going to buy Nokia's here mapping division, but that was going to be a several billion dollar deal. So I figured they got a cheaper option. Um, but here's my question that I don't really understand. If you buy the imaging team, how does that help with navigation? It's component to mapping in general, but it's not the actual core function. So I don't really get it, and I, I have not been able to find out Uber's strategy here, so I'm, I'm very curious. If you know, Please talk let to us know uh, what's please going on. DM us, or tweet, whatever. Uh, Alex uh, at TechCrunch.com. But it's really, it's really important for both, I mean, for both, Lyft just hired a, a team to work on location. Uber, that, I mean, that's the core problem, right? Like, it, it's very frustrating for the customer to not be able to f have the driver pick them up exactly where they are, right. to have to call the driver to say, no, please come down half a block. I'm actually over here. It's extremely frustrating. Well, the ironic thing here for Foursquare is that they were so heavy on location eight years ago, whatever it was, mm -hmm. and they were just too early. Because right now, I feel like you could take a lot of Foursquare data about locations and better track where I am based on where I might be staying, like I'm outside the creamery or whatever it is. And instead, the Foursquare is, you know, the and so forth. So I, I think that it's fun, but it's a small story. The larger thing is Microsoft shedding a lot of people across divisions. Mm -hmm. But for Uber, it's a win again. I mean, Uber just keeps crushing it. So got to give them that. Yeah. And, and speaking of not really the drivers in the 1099 economy uh, and other 1099 economy people ship, I'm trying to make this segue, but that was really <laughs> unsmooth. That's completely unsmooth. Just, just shout, segue! And move on. Uh, ship made their careers full-time in place. Yeah, and so Ship isn't the first one to kind of either consider or do this, right? Um, but uh, so now that they've said that um, some of their careers, I th maybe all of their careers, I think, are going to be full-time employees, um, traditionally many of these on-demand services are considered 1099s, they're contractors, they don't get full benefits. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we were told by SHIP, like, for example, even though they're bring, being brought on, there's not going to be any kind of non-compete clauses or anything mm -hmm. like that. They're going to basically be um, full-time employees. And they're um, one of the first to, to do this, actually. They are, but yeah. it's it's interesting because SHIP is, um, you have the kind of on-demand economy, economy over here, and SHIP is like when you talk to investors and things like that, they're like over here mm -hmm. because they, they, they occupy this like, interesting space where if you look at a company like FedEx, they're very much about handling the things that are getting to your door, and SHIP definitely does that. But for example, they just hired um, uh, one of Foursquare's business development um, people to head up their business development, and he's focusing on returns. So he's, SHIP is the other way around, bringing boxes from your door to mm -hmm. somewhere else, right? Yeah. Um, and you know, everyone that you talk to is like, oh my gosh, it's like such a magical experience. And so when you bring on these workers full time, you're talking about ensuring like a, a better experience for your user base. And then you look at a company like FedEx, again, getting things to your door, multi-billion dollar company, ship, you know, already has raised at a valuation that, you know, depending on who you talk to is 250 to 275 million. Mm -hmm. I think we've heard it's 275 post. Um, it's, it's basically become its own sort of beast, right? 
Um, now, whether the rest of the kind of on-demand economy follows that, there's a lot of debate over whether Uber follows that. Right, or... Uber have, is, is currently in a lawsuit with the, with the one employee. Right. Uh, but I, I mean, even if you talk to a lot of drivers, they only want to pick up a couple of hours of work. Well, it depends on who you talk to, right? Um, you know, some people really, really want, like the freedom of being a 1099 contract employee. They can kind of work wherever they want. Um, some people really want to be full-time employees. Um, you know, that's one of the reasons why we specifically asked, you know, SHIP, like, is there going to be a non-compete clause in this? No, there's not. So, you know, you can, it, you can even look at it kind of like um, other industries where people are working multiple jobs, right? Uh -huh. You can pick the one that has the best benefits, maybe, and then work there and then work on the side for other, other jobs, like, I don't know, like a Lyft or an Uber or something like that. Um, but that has kind of sparked off this big debate over, you know, whether companies should offer the ability to be full-time employees or just stick with contractors, or maybe there's like a third potential category, um, which even then it seems like there's a long, long way off. Yeah, right? Connie, our, our, one of our news hires, wrote a post, I think this morning, saying that the third option is really an idea, but not a potentiality in the short term. So you can't really lean on that. Yeah, if you talk to attorneys, it sounds like that's a long way yeah. off. Mm -hmm. So my question is, you know, does this really help SHIP have a, um, a better employee base in our interactions? Does it help them hire better people, keep them longer term? Is it a competitive advantage? Well, it, it ensures that they have a consistent standard of quality, in theory, right? Like, because if your deliveries aren't very good, you can fire your employees, right? Or lay them off or, or whatever, right? And then you can try and hire and reward the best ones, you know, similar to a place like okay. um, I mean, anywhere. can you do that before? If you don't, if you don't deliver the package, you're not going to get hired. Yeah, but there's more of an incentive now, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, am I going to get a raise? Am I going to get mm -hmm. um, better benefits? Am I going to get a bonus? Am I going to get so on and so on and so forth, right? And it's more consistent, I imagine, but I'm, you know. I guess my, my last question is, do, will this spread? Is this an important starting point, or is this more of an outlier data point that uh, won't convert? Well, it's, it's, it's a, I mean, we don't know yet, but, you know, as I've said, like, from people I talk to, like, you've got, like, Instacart and Postmates and a bunch of these other businesses, on-demand on businesses over here that are kind of considered logistics businesses, and then you have Ship over here, right? A lot of people are thinking about Ship differently then they're thinking about the other kind of batch of on-demand businesses. Why is that? Yeah, why is, what's the difference? Because of the sort of FedEx example is like just one example, but it's, it, they've, they figured something out basically. Um, and, you know, eventually, you know, theoretically all these companies will be thought about very differently, but for the, but for the time being, SHIP has kind of like figured out this like sweet spot that has a bunch of investors really, really interested, a bunch of, you know, like potential people in the technology industry working with them, very, very interested. They've attracted a bunch of partners for their return business, um, all these these kinds of things. So they, they've picked up like a surprising amount of momentum compared to some of the other on-demand. Although obviously Uber is, you know, well, right. its own Uber. 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 Speaking of like, outlying data Uber. points. Uber. Yeah, Another Uber. outlying data right, point yeah. over here. No, so but ship I, Uber. Okay, but I, I will say though, ship is inexpensive and awesome. I've used it and I was actually- I love ship, yeah. yeah. They yeah. come, it's I felt quick. so bad for making fun of it for so long, but it was just great. So I can't knock that. Yeah, all right, that's it for Crunch Week. We'll see you next time.